Make Sean, Josh, and Jason present an interactomation in Interactovision. Boom. Presented in monocolor. Get this program on Laserdisc. All at your local bandages. Brought to you by Enron. And viewers not much unlike yourself. We give you our thanks. Be considerate of others. Please turn off your bazookas before the program. Welcome to Econoland. Population, Population many. 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 Econoland has three main trade powers. The USA, China, and Britain. Econoland's economy runs off of unleaded hat. Except for China. Their hats are actually very covered in lead. The United States and China trade some burros and fezes. Arriba! Who trades what? If you said USA exports fezes and China exports sombreros, then you're wrong. China exports fezes and the US exports stylish fiesta hats. How is that possible? China's so much better than us at making crap. Why not make it all? It's simple. China has the comparative advantage in fezes. One half fez for each Mexican party cap. Meanwhile, we have the comparative advantage in Latino head toppers of festivities. One third fez for each Spanish speaker's lid. It's so easy! But who benefits? Well, China sells more fezes. Chinese fez makers benefit from the larger market and increased demand from abroad. Almost oh, good! But wait, there is trouble afoot in the People's Republic. Dun dun dun! The sombreroists lose as all the new and not lead painted hats from America come in. They lose. Well, what about the United States? Well, the opposite happens in America. The sombreros dance, and the fezes hang themselves. This allows both countries to consume beyond their PPF. Well, I suppose that makes sense. But what about other trade, like US slash Britain? Oh, that one's easy. Britain trades top hats, USA trades belts. Good show. Each has an absolute advantage in one type. This makes it brilliantly easy, Governor. So then, everyone wins, right? Wrong! Darn. You see, the import market loses again. In the US's case, the top hatteries. Huh? Okay. So does every country always have a winner? Nope. For example, if Zimbabwe trades with China... Target! Disclaimer! Stainless pots are totally hats! You see, China is ridiculous at hattery, and Zimbabwe is poor as well as bad at making hats. Oh, I not well. So China wouldn't trade with them as China wouldn't benefit? Actually, they would. In perfect econo land, China can use this as an opportunity to focus production. Refer back to the United States slash Britain trade cable. The ratios of possible output per hat per country are 2 to 10. If we average them, 1 belt to 6 top hats. Oh, so fair! Yep, this is a fair terms of trade. Terms of trade can vary, however. Ask your doctor if terms of trade is right for you. And now, trade barriers! Oh god! I'm scared of bears in trade! There are four kinds. Tariffs, quotas, embargoes, and voluntary restrictions. Four bears? Oh, wonderful! Every day of the week! Let's start with tariffs. These are taxes placed on imports. They raise government revenue and price level. If price starts at A, a tariff to B causes equilibrium. If quantity starts at A, a quota at A will lock the price, but prevent equilibrium. An embargo stops all trade. The United States is a schizophrenic cheerleader. Okay! I am so sad! I am so very, very sad! We support free trade, except we threaten to impose import barriers, unless they restrict exports. This is voluntary trade restrictions, the fourth trade barrier. The other countries don't have to restrict trade, but if they don't, bad things happen. Consider Madagascar. Shutting down everything. Madagascar buys hats as often as possible. They're rich after winning the Illinois State Lottery Mega Millions. So many hats. After years of hat collecting, Madagascar sells all their hats to China at a loss. But, but, 
That makes no sense. Well, the Chinese hat makers go out of business as they can't compete. Once they have a monopoly, they drive prices way up and more than cover for their losses. Burr, hurr, hurr. That's wrong. Madagascar sucks. That's true. This process, called dumping, is terribly immoral and is frowned upon. No trade for you! Oh no! And no gains of trade! Uniqueness gains are when you get things you can't normally produce. Gains from scale occur when access to exports reduce production costs i.e. the market expands. Long-run dynamic gains are when trade accelerates economic growth and development. The three types are spread of technology, capital formation, and innovation. Spread of technology is the diversification of technology. That makes sense! Capital formation is when the value of national output increases, resulting in a larger ability to save and invest. Innovation is caused by international competition. Political gains are when the countries are dependent on each other, so they become politically stable. Oh, is that it? Yep. Just don't forget the law of comparative advantage. If the countries differ in pre-trade opportunity costs, then they will both gain from trade. Wow! I feel so much more enlightened! Thanks for teaching me, Brain Slug! No problem! 